inside the law library at the Cleveland County Courthouse. Some reporting for the Oklahoma of Dave Morris. Week 4 continues the Oklahoma Opioid Trials Day 18, and Judge Thad Bachman, after giving a shout-out to the Norman's Jazz in June Festival, uh, heard video testimony in his courtroom from Richard Ponder, its corporate rep from Johnson & Johnson. Have you been given, in your role, as J&J's interface with the state of Oklahoma, to address that problem? I don't know that, uh, that we were as specific on that issue to try to solve a situation in, in just the state of Oklahoma. Has J&J armed you with information to help determine whether there is, in fact, a problem with the state of Oklahoma? Not specifically in the state of Oklahoma. Has J&J provided you with information to try to determine what the problem is in the state of Oklahoma? No, sir, I don't believe they have. Has J and J tried to provide you or excuse me, instructed? Has J and J provided you with information to identify what the causes are of the problem in the state of Oklahoma? Not specifically in the state of Oklahoma. Has J and J provided you with any information to help identify what can be done to fix the problem in the state of Oklahoma? In my capacity, yes, sir. I don't believe we were, I, I'm not aware of anything that we had specifically focused or targeted on Oklahoma. Following that testimony, then the state called Dr. Julie Ann Croft, an executive uh, with the Center for Wellness and Recovery at Oklahoma State University. So my role is to work with the clinicians and really help them to execute their vision for the center, how that interacts with my vision for the center, and make sure that we're integrating research, best practices, identifying new best practices. Clinicians don't always think of it in terms of research. They, they have an art to their practice, but really they've, they're honing their skills and, and they have really good research questions and ideas. And it's part of my role to bring the right researchers to the team to help them to do this. Are required under this portion of the plan. So we've, we've based this on a recommendation from the National Council of Chemical Dependency Nurses that there's an LADC for every thousand students. And since there are 222,000 students per Oklahoma State Regents for higher education, we're estimating the need for 222 LADCs. Students per campus, a conservative number? I think it's, it's a conservative number based on the need for individuals with opioid use disorder to return to school. Based on your education, training, skill, and experience, do you have an opinion on whether year-round housing in a collegiate recovery community for 30 students at each of Oklahoma's five most populated campuses is necessary to abate Oklahoma's opioid crisis? I do. And what is that opinion? It is necessary. And based on your education, training, skill, and experience, do you have an opinion whether a cost of $270,000 per year for collegiate recovery community housing at each of these five campuses is a reasonable and necessary expense to implement this program? I do. What is that opinion? It is reasonable and necessary. Schools in the state, so four quarter time FTE at a cost per of 260, 208 for a total cost of 260, 208. And so the total cost for the personnel is $741,232, is that correct? That is correct. And would these personnel work at the school's training, these health professionals? They would. And how does that, how does that work? So a, a program like this would, it, for a department head, they, they may say, I have, I have the faculty who are capable of teaching this now that it is a requirement of me. We'll take these funds and I will allocate portions of their time directed toward teaching a course like this. Uh, another alternative may be that a department head may hire someone based on these funds in order to make sure that these courses get taught. So let's talk about the personnel. What personnel are required to implement these addiction medicine departments? So the, these are personnel required. Uh, we have outpatient providers at five per institution, inpatient providers at five per institution, consultant providers at three per institution, and the, the consultant providers will be able to be on call when a primary care physician calls and says, I think my patient might have opioid use disorder. What should I do next? They're, they're available to take on those questions in, in real time. Patient training, skills, and experience, do you have an opinion on whether addiction medicine departments at each of the state's medical schools, as you've described, is necessary to abate Oklahoma's opioid crisis? I do. And what is that opinion? It is necessary. 
And based on your education, skill, training, and experience, do you have an opinion whether the one-time $14 million cost of funding an endowed chair at each of the state's medical schools is a reasonable and necessary expense to implement this portion of the abatement plan? I do. And what is that opinion? It is reasonable and necessary. And based on your education, training, and experience, do you have an opinion whether the total cost of $11,751,060 per year to staff an addiction medicine department at each of the state's medical schools is a reasonable and necessary expense to implement this portion of the abatement plan. I do. And what is that opinion? It is reasonable and necessary. And based on your education, training, and experience, do you have an opinion regarding how long this portion of the abatement plan will need to be in place in order to abate Oklahoma's opioid crisis? I do. And what is that opinion? At least 20 years, but preferably for 30 years, in order to treat the breadth of opioid addiction in our state. Uh, Cross-examination expected to continue this afternoon following the lunch break. You can follow along at Oklahoma.com for live coverage. Randy Ellis, as always, is in the courtroom. You can follow his stories online at Oklahoma.com and every day in the Oklahoma. Again, more coverage online, including court documents, lots of videos, and plenty of archived coverage can be found online at Oklahoma.com. From inside the law library here at the Cleveland County Courthouse, reporting for the Oklahoma, I'm Dave Brooks.